In this video, I'm going to show you how Wesley runs the best offense in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is about how to basically get better. Um, I try to help people get better at Madden 21 through daily videos just like this one where I break down maybe what pro players are doing or I try to break down some concepts that you can use and apply to your scheme. So we're going to dive right in here in just a second, but I want to talk a little bit about about Wesley. I think Wesley might be um, considered probably the best gun bunch player this year. Um by a lot of circles. I mean, he, his gun bunch is insanely good. Um, and he actually recently just switched his playbook um, for the club championships to using the uh, Seattle Seahawks offense playbook. Now, my personal opinion, I think that was a bad decision, but I'm going to share with you a couple of setups that he would use that were, were very, very effective. Um, I don't feel like he ran mesh post nowhere near as much as he should have. Um, a couple of other plays that I thought he could have ran better, but one of the plays that he ran that I thought was really, really good was this clear out SE out, and not very many people run it the way that he was running it, so I'm excited to dive into this with you. Um, and I actually think he could have even ran it even better than he did, but this was kind of his play that he wanted, and you saw he hit it a couple of times. This was kind of his play call um, to beat the mid blitz. Now, if you've never, like I said, if you've never been to the channel, if you want to get my full gun bunch scheme um, in my text membership, we release new schemes every week. That video is available. It is um, in my membership. So all you have to do to sign up for it is completely free. Just text me. My number is in the top left-hand corner of the screen. All he would do is he would smart route this route to Robert Tunyon. And if you notice, you see that it goes super, super short. Now, in Mutt... In regs, it might be a little bit different, but in Mutt, that's Darren Waller with route tech. What that means practically for the way Wesley was playing is he would essentially run a clear-out route like this to Devontae Adams. He would block his running back for max protection, and then he would drag um, about his scantling and essentially would power block uh, with, this, with, this, um, with this slot receiver. But what you'll notice is this route to Robert Tunyon is really, really, really good against man-to-man -man coverage. So we'll show it to you again. So if you take a look here, it gets inside separation and goes very nice um, against that coverage. Now, what Wesley did, which I thought was really, really smart, was he basically um, he would use a drag route with a playmaker. So Valdez Scantling, imagine if he has playmaker, so you can playmaker him really anywhere that you want. Now, what I would have done with this is I probably would have taken Devontae Adams and maybe if I had, because he has high master, maybe put him on a corner route um, or something like that. But if, again, if you watch Robert Tunyon here, you'll see that one of the other things is, if depending on how good he beats that man coverage, you see that it does get over the 25-yard um, purple zones that a lot of people run. Another thing is a lot of people don't run those to that side of the field. So you'll see here, um, and of course, Will Redmond's just going to intercept me as I'm talking about how good this route is. Um, this route, and, and just to be, you know, just to kind of be a little bit, make sure this gets open here, but you see the inside position that you get. Obviously, with route tech on a tight end, that's a lot better, but it's like a, it's like a, in, it, it's basically like the post route from uh, the curl flat, but it happens to the tight end, and that's really why Wesley switched to this, for, um, to this, this playbook. Now, what I would recommend doing is, let's say that you wanted to do something like this, right? I think there's a couple things you could do. I actually think it makes a lot of sense to run two streaks. And the reason why is because if you get this little like underneath coverage type thing, you can pass lead this streak outside to the receiver. Now, the reason that matters is because a lot of people right now in the Madden community are doing um, different types of press coverage. They're doing different types of press coverage. And the reason that that's significant is what this route right here can do, this little mo this little route to Tavon Austin, is if you get press coverage on him and you motion him to the outside, you see he's going to get an instant animation that's going to basically allow him to win, and then it's essentially a swerve catch over the top. Now, in Mutt, that's going to have a receiver that has 90-plus speed with high route running and everything like that. So you're not going to have to worry you know, about whether or not he is going to get open. He's just going to get open. So you could have two streaks, basically, 
um, one for the inside seams and one for the outside seams. And as you'll see here, this outside streak, if you pass lead it really well, you will have a pretty good chance at getting it over the top of the defense. That's again adding or, or kind of planning that um, they you know run the coverage where you're basically going to have two reads because um, really if if the if the safety goes outside like he does right there, you can probably hit the slot over the top as you see right there, and that was something that Wesley had tried to hit um, throughout this game. The reason this matters is because oftentimes what's going to happen is their user is going to be forced to basically run to the uh, tight end route. And, and this is an example of just kind of a traditional cover two. But you see how the safety on the outside, um, if you take a look at that deep half safety, he's going to have to come inside to that inside streak to Devontae Adams. And so that's going to leave another window where you could potentially hit this route to Tavon Austin if you get him out far enough. You see, that's more what we're talking about. Click on um, and, and get it out there. Now, again, with the deep half over there, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want to do that. But it's going to at least start the conversation and start to open the window for your, your pass lead. And, and, and here again, um, if I pass lead this to the right and I'm on the wide side of the field, I have a chance to get that to him. Now, again, I'm not saying you're always going to hit it. I'm just saying you have a chance. So what that's going to then open up is the play Z spot and go. And Z spot and go, what we're going to basically do is we're going to put Table and Austin on an out route. The tight end is going to be on a streak. We've got the drag on the backside here. Um, and then the running back, can we can do whatever we want. Oftentimes you would see people block him. But basically we're going to do the same motion out <coughs> to Tavon Austin. But now we have this corner route to Devontae Adams over the top. Now that route won't always get open um, against man-to-man -man coverage. I feel like it's kind of going to get open about 70% of the time against man-to-man. -man. Um, and then about you know the rest of the time it, it might not get open. So that's just something that you have to understand. But... This motion out does a really, really good job because it looks exactly the same. And as you can see, you can hit that route if it does get the separation that you want it to get. You still have a threat to the streak to the middle. And so this play really does a great job against man-to-man. -man. And this in combination with a couple of other things that I thought, and I thought Wesley should have ran this play. Um, there's a play out of Carolina called Smash Return that I thought he should have ran more. Um, he was running this play bench pivot. <coughs> with the drag route to Valdez Scantling and the motion out. So, again, you could do that right there as well. It's the same kind of concept um, for you to be able to beat the man-to-man -man coverage. It's all about the playmaker for a lot of people in Gun Bunch, and, that, and, and, and that's kind of what you saw. But the, what So what ended up happening as far as, like, what did they have to do? Um, what did they have to do to stop the playmaker to the, to the, the drag on the left? Well, you would see a lot of hard flat coverage on that side of the field. So if you ran something like this and Robert Tunyon was able to get, you know, inside positioning, now you've got a route that could potentially beat that coverage over the middle of the field. So that's a little bit about how it would work against man. Now against zone, this is a really, really good zone beater as well, especially if you do it just like this right here. Um, and what you'll notice about Tavon Austin's route is if you're facing any cover two in the game, you should see that he's going to get over the top of that cover two. As you can see right there, he gets over the top and you're able to make a throw. The other thing that you should be able to notice is you also have inside pass lead. You also have the drag. You also have the, the tight end route. Pretty much everything will work you know, pretty flawlessly against zone. You can inside pass lead this route to Devontae Adams. Now, they have definitely made it harder um, to hit the seams with the most reach of recent patches and things like that but you know all in all this is still a really really good zone beater and the beauty of it is as you can see right there your tight end is going to come wide open over the middle so these two plays in combination with the play flood we all know about the motion out from the play flood um really were kind of wesley's go-to plays um throughout this game i wish he would have ran a little bit more clear out but instead of just doing it like this and bl basically blocking Tavon Austin, I wish he would have motioned him out a little bit because I think he would have had a little bit more success than he did um, based off of off of off of the uh, off of the defense that John Beast was playing. So, anyways, guys, that's a little bit about Wesley's bunch. Obviously, man coverage gives, in my opinion, man coverage definitely gives bunch a little bit harder of a time. And so these were some things that. 
you know, I just thought that he could have done to, you know, kind of make it a little bit easier on himself uh, just as far as, you know, being able to beat the man coverage over the top uh, in certain situations. With this motion out streak, um, that's one of the things I thought Wesley really should have done a little bit more. But those were some great setups. It's just I think that John Beast was sending the pressure and Wesley really wanted to pick up the blitz and make a big play. And ultimately that just didn't happen. Um, so anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you want to get my full gun bunch scheme, text me. My phone number is 812-216-3644. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the club championship quarterfinals. We've got the semis tonight and then we also have the championship game. So really, really excited uh, for those games coming up. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you want to get that gun bunch scheme, go ahead and just shoot me a text message. Again, my number is in the description of this video.